What up ladies and gentlemen, Chen Chen here bringing you guys the Season 11 Vladimir Guide created by yours truly. This guide will be uh, encompassing everything within Vladimir in Season 11. So with that being said, here are the table of contents so you guys can skip around. I highly recommend watching this chronologically so you can actually understand how to play this champion, especially if you are learning him. If you are a Vladimir player already and still want to continue watching, definitely feel free to do so. There might be some information that you don't know or, of course, some things that I have my own take on. So without further ado, we're going to start with the Vladimir identity. I think it's very important if you're trying to pick up a champion to understand what it's trying to do, the pros and cons of picking Vlad, steps to mastering him to become one of the best Vlads. Then we're going to talk about the runes itemization, summoner spell choice. Of course, this is going to go with any sort of guide, right? And it's going to be pretty much the most optimal of these categories. Then we're going to move on to a matchup tier list. Now, I do want to say before we get started that the matchup tier list is focused strictly on mid lane. Just because I have not played a single Vlad top lane, honestly, in this season. If I had, it's like maybe like five games so with that being said it's going to be mostly in the mid lane but this video more or less encounters uh, or encompasses the top lane as well and lastly we'll talk about the early mid and late game as to what you should be doing with Vladimir and then end it off with a quick combo guide timestamps are going to be down below if you find this video useful make sure to smash like button Join the Crimson Pack by subscribing to the channel. Let's get right into Vladimir's identity. Alright, so we are going to talk about Vladimir's identity. As I mentioned earlier, key to mastering a champion is to actually understand what it's trying to do. So, first two points I have here is him being a hyperscaler and him being a hyper carry. These both play uh, together. And it's very important to understand this. So what they mean is basically you are a champion that is going to be requiring a lot of resources to get ahead and a lot of resources to actually be able to quote unquote 1v9. This champion is perceived as, you know, one of those champions that can just single handedly win team fights. It definitely is. But there are a lot of situations uh and specific aspects of the game that you have to conquer before you can reach that point. And obviously, you cannot, you know, 1v9 carry every single game with this champion. That is a misconception. Vladimir does not do that. Um, it's very heavy on game situation, how your team can adapt with what Vladimir strives to do, and how well you can execute it as well. So, Hyperscaler, this is very basic. You know, he has a weak early game. Decent mid game, strong late game. That's basically what hyperscaler means. Now, a misconception is that he scales or he's one of the best scalers in the game. I'll talk about that later on, but in my opinion, I don't believe he is. I think towards 40 minutes and onwards, he is going to start getting, you know, more useless um, as opposed to like a Kale or Cassidy who, you know, stays on top. And that just comes with the fact that MR rushing is absolutely broken against Vlad and also how you know he's a low range champion which means that towards the later portions of the game when you're waiting for your cooldowns it's very crucial you play to your strength and to proper timing so in a lot of cases you know even if you reach late game even if he has enough damage to one shot someone it's more or less not going to matter because of his cons that we'll talk about later and lastly Kind of the very ma most basic identity of Vladimir is his, is pretty much what he is actually. He is an AoE burst mage, and I put in parentheses low range because he has no real way of, you know, executing from afar. That that's not what he is. He has to go very deep, and he has to make sure that he is bursting champions that can be bursted. If you are going in and targeting a tank. 9 out of 10 times you're not going to be able to burst them and you're just wasting Vladimir's potential. Alright, so now let's talk about pros and cons. I have them listed. Starting off with the pros, obviously scales well, not much to say there. Burst as well. He has a lot of damage packed into his Q 
kit, he has sustain as well, that's very obvious. You know, his Q has sustain, his R has sustain. Another very big pro is that he's just no mana. He used no mana. So if you are at the very top of Vladimir's level, you will understand how to really push this uh, concept forward with champions that don't require mana versus champions that do require mana. You're going to be able to push this very, very far. Of course, he has great snowball potential once you start getting rolling, and this is kind of due to just how broken Dark Seal slash Magi's is. Um, but great snowball potential and a very, very strong team fighter due to his R and due to how, as mentioned earlier, he is an AoE burst mage. If you get in a proper position with your E and your R, you're going to do a lot of team fighting damage. So, of course, with every pro, there's going to be cons. Now, Vlad has a lot of cons. You know, his early game is one of the main con that makes him very, very, you know, skillful to play because early game uh, consists of majority of the game, honestly. Early game determines the mid and late game. And with that being said, early game is very, very crucial for Vladimir. And obviously, it's a con because he has a very, very weak early game. He's also a mobile, you know, he has no sort of dashes, no sort of uh, increased movement speed. His W technically increased movement speed, but it's literally not, not even noticeable, right? So that's why people who play Vlad pick Phase Rush or go Rocket Belt to kind of help with that. But regardless, the kit itself has no mobility, especially for such a low range champion. Um, he has costly abilities. Especially, this is more catered towards the early game, but of course his E and his W both take HP away from him. So sure, he has Q for sustain, R for sustain, even though R sustain really isn't that consistent. It's more just Q sustain. He has very costly abilities, which also means that in lane, technically speaking, you pretty much only have one ability to trade with the enemies, right? You're looking for your Qs. And if you're really good at Vlad, you're going to master how to weave in autos as well. He has no utility, as mentioned earlier, kind of with how he's a mobile. He's just kind of this huge body that does a shit ton of damage, but really doesn't offer anything else, right? So no utility, he has no CC, he has no setup, no nothing, right? Just strictly damage, sustain, that's all he has. Next con, you know, he has a crap ton of hard matchups. This goes without saying... When you take a hyperscaler with weak early game, of course he's going to struggle against literally any champ with any sort of early game. And even in matchups that are quote unquote easy for him, they can still roam around. They have significantly more roam pressure. Um, you know, they have significantly more agency. Even if they have not enough damage to kill Vlad, they can be still useful to the team. For example, Galio, right? He can still be very, very useful to the team, even if he can't win the lane, technically. And that kind of moves on to the next con of his low priority slash agency in lane. Because you have very little wave clear, very little priority, oftentimes and not, especially in the mid lane, your jungle is going to be left there 1v1 uh, scuttle or 1v2 scuttle, and you're not going to be there. So keep that in mind when you play Vladimir. And last but not least, he is very resource intensive, as mentioned earlier, how he plays as a hyperscaler and hyper carry. You need resources, you need gold, you need items, you need XP. Otherwise, the champion is not even a champion, right? A lot of times you'll see Vladimir players talk about how he really doesn't become a champion until, you know, that 15-20 minute mark. That's because he needs resources in the early game. You are not going to be impacting a whole lot all right let's talk about the steps to mastering vladimir so you can become one of the best vladimirs very first thing you should pay attention while trying to improve on vladimir is looking at how you're using and playing around important cooldowns so these are obviously your pool your ult flash ghost even ignite you know i don't want to list everything here but especially these four now i'm not saying flash ghost if you're running flash ghost but like you know it's more flash than anything. I mean, ghost is kind of just there. But anyways, pool, R, and flash. If you're burning it for no reason and 
uh, specific occasions, like right when you're VOD reviewing, you really have to pay attention uh, to those details and why you're pooling, why you're ulting there, why you're flashing there. Very important because you pretty much have to play around these cooldowns. Whenever your pool is not up, you should not be going in. Whenever your flash is not up, you should not be going to river fights. Whenever your R is not up, same applies, right? You should not be going to river fights. You're not going to do anything with just your basic abilities. Q, E, W, it's going to do maybe like 600 HP depending on, you know, what stage of the game it is. But then you're just going to die because you have no mobility. Going back to what I said about pros and cons, you have no mobility, you're low range, you're going to die if you don't play around important cooldowns. So... A lot of times, especially when I'm coaching Vladimir, it's very important to pay attention as to why you're using a specific thing. And if you're wasting it, how can you not waste it? And if you're not using it, simply put, how can you, you know, adapt to be able to use it a lot? Because I pretty much see either of the spectrum, right? I see a player who, you know, uses pool way too early, or I see a player that just never used pool at all. So it's very critical to pay attention why and how you're using your cooldowns. Next is asserting proper aggression. As mentioned earlier, because you're a mana list champion with sustain, you should not be in the mindset of, oh, I'm just going to power farm until 20 minutes until I become a champion. Yes, you will start impacting the game at that time. No, it's not the best way to play Vlad. He still has opportunities to go in in the early game, despite it being weak. You just have to be extremely calculated, right? Because you don't use mana and you have sustain, a lot of the times you have to assert proper aggression to actually be able to force the enemy laner to, you know, back. And that sort of thing can build up to a huge advantage. So that's what makes or breaks a really good Vladimir player is utilizing his given sustain and him being manaless. And last but not least, uh, a very key thing is pay attention to your devs while you're mastering Vlad. Once again, as mentioned a, a ton of times, and hopefully you guys get the message, Vlad is very, very resource intensive. And every single time you die, you're losing out on timing and resources, and that is just not what you can afford to do. So minimize your devs. If you're VOD reviewing and realizing you're dying to a crap ton of ganks, assess why you're doing this. Maybe you're perma pushed up. Maybe you have no vision at all. Maybe you're recklessly using pool, recklessly using flash. Once again, very, very important to pay attention to how you're dying, and that will allow you to master Vlad, right? If you're OP at GG, KDA is not at least in the green color rather than the black. Um then obviously you're doing something wrong. You want to be able to minimize your deaths. All right, so for runes, we are actually going to go over the runes in Champ Select. So as you can see, I am now in Champ Select. Um, we are going to go over every single viable rune page that you can go on Vladimir in Season 11. Very first and foremost, you know, the classic, the good old Vladimir Season 10 rune page you can still go this everything is the same with the phase rush nimbus cloak transcendence gathering storm boots cosmic insight take ability haste a adaptive force and then uh armor or magic resist depending on what you need you can also take health as well all of that is fine next iteration of this you can go the summon airy page with scorch um, this is a little bit more lane presence if you're into maybe like a melee matchup you can poke out This is definitely recommended if you are top lane. This is definitely recommended um, and then Next you can just go the basic electrocute setup with electrocute taste of blood eyeball collection or ghost poro and then ultimate hunter This is the most aggressive rune page you can go um, And it's very effective into melee matchups so now talking about secondaries within Phase Rush, you can go this with double healing. You can also go for more ultimates um, in very, very niche situations. You can go last stand with Triumph. Uh, you can also go second win with Revitalize. All of these are kind of fine. You just kind of have to play around with what you feel comfortable with. You can also go Futures Market with Cosmic Insight. This works as well. And this goes for any rune page, even if you go... Uh, Scorch, or uh, Summon Airy, or Electrocute. Pretty much the secondary never changed. You can go either of these from the two that I mentioned before.
And that is it for the runes, as mentioned. Uh, the main viable rune page, main rune page, is going to be Phase Rush Electrocute. And very niche situations, you can go summon Airy with, of course, the secondaries that I showed you. Alright, moving on to itemization for Vladimir. Obviously, with the starting items, you should be going refill Dark Seal in literally every single game. Dark Seal is what makes Vladimir decent in Season 11. Without Dark Seal buffs that they change, Vladimir would honestly be struggling down in the dirts. So, thank God for Dark Seal. Um, yeah, you definitely want to go for it. If you find yourself struggling to CS, because obviously the Doran abilities give you a little bit more help with CS, then sure, you can go for either Doran's Ring or Doran's Blade, or not Doran's Blade, Doran's Ring or Doran's Shield, depending on the matchup, but more or less, if you really want to master Vladimir, just go Dark Seal every single game. Even I miss a crap ton of CS uh, in the early game, but the power spike of getting Dark Seal and that snowball potential is just too much to pass up. Afterwards, you want to go Rocket Belt into Sorg Shoes. Now, speaking of the Mythic item, pretty much Rocket Belt is going to be the best Mythic for Vladimir in Season 11. I could do an analysis video on this, but I feel as if there's no reason to. Everyone should know this. Night Harvester is a better one item power spike, but it just falls off like a truck. And then obviously, the Rift Maker is just... It's counterintuitive as to what Vladimir is trying to do. And then for the Sork Boots... You pretty much always want to go Sork Boots because penetration is very hard to come by and you kind of want to go for this sort of build that has a crap ton. So even with people that are going MR, which is very prevalent in this season, uh, you'll just be able to shred through it. And they also nerfed Ionian Boots, which was the other viable option, but they did nerf it. It just doesn't feel as good. Go Sork Boots every single game. And now you can make a pit stop. Uh, if you are a Season 10 CDR lover, you know, the uh, Proto Belt lovers in Season 10 who didn't go Spellbinder, go for the Cosmic Drive. It'll make you feel like you're playing Season 10 Vladimir with the CDR. Uh, it's not bad. Movement speed's not bad. Ability power's not bad. Overall, it's a pretty mediocre item in my opinion. Um, still, you can go for the Pit Stop and then go for your damage items or just go straight for the damage items, which is going to be Rabadons or Void Staff depending on enemy composition or what they're building. If they're building a lot of MR, just go for the Void Staff first. If they're pretty squishy, just go for the Rabadons. And to round about your build, you should pretty much just go either Magi's or Zhonya's as your 6th item. Um, fifth and sixth item i didn't include other items you know like banshees or whatever just because pretty much games are going to be over within these build right rocket belt sorks rabadon's void Magi's, zanyas is a perfectly good six item full build and if you go cosmic drive oftentimes you will probably not have zanyas which is fine um but these six items are Literally core for Vladimir, you do not want to sway away from these builds. Spear Visage, no. Deadmen's, no. No other items are going to be good. Stick to this chart for itemization and you will be good to go for Vladimir. Also, quick note, you can go Magi's before any of these items other than Rocket Belt. You should ideally get Rocket Belt and Swork Boots. And then, at any point, you can just go Magi's. Depends on the game state. If you're very ahead, you know, you might as well cash out. Or if your team is extremely behind, you should also cash out as well. Hopefully get a good team fight and come back into the game. All right, so moving on to summoner spell choice. Now I've laid it out very beautifully. So hopefully there's no uh, miscommunication within summoner spell choice. The very standard is flash ignite. This will give you pretty good solid scaling. It gives you kill pressure. It's just really standard. Not much to say about that. For the pure late game, if you want to... Pure late game, just go Flash Ghost. This will give you the maximum effectiveness in the late game. You have two ways of going in with your Rocket Belt uh, and the Summoner spells. It's just really, really nice. If you are playing more for the ultra scaling side of Vlad, in my opinion, Vlad doesn't scale as well as other champs, which I already mentioned. So this setup isn't really the greatest. Uh, you kind of need some sort of early snowball, but it's there for players. Uh, especially in lower elo as they just cannot close out games. 
Next is the mid game choice. This is my personal favorite. You have a little bit of kill pressure and you have a little bit of late game securance with Ghost. Now, the key thing about playing with Ghost Ignite is whenever it's off, uh, whenever it's on cooldown, you really do have to adapt your playstyle because it is so crucial to actually have Ghost to actually go in and mid lane skirmishes. So keep that in mind. And then, of course, if you're top lane, you can either go Ghost Ignite, which works pretty fine in top, or the standard Flash Teleport. Because in the top, okay, I, I don't even need to speak about it. Like, if you're playing Vlad top, you're screwed anyway. So don't need to speak too much about it. It's there for you guys if you play Vlad top, which I'd feel bad for you. But anyways, Flash Teleport is an option. Now moving on to matchup tier list. Now I'm going to breeze through this really quickly. Um... I don't feel as if there's a really good reason for me to discuss every single reason as to why I put something where I put it. But if you want me to do an in-depth matchup tier list for Season 11, let me know. In the very top, we have Anivia, Cassiopeia, Cassidin, and Malzahar. Now, also keep in mind this matchup isn't based exactly around my opinion. It's based around the Vlad community as well. In my opinion, I put Cass in hard or medium because I often go electrocute and just ram through the Kassadin, but I know a lot of Vladimir players struggle against that matchup. In the hard, we have a lot of champions. Um, yeah, I'm just not going to list through. Medium matchup is more skillful, I'd say. All these champions, you know, both sides can really win. It, it's not really, like, one-sided, I'd say. Um, and then easy, you should be able to win the matchup, but even then, don't think of easy as like an auto win, all right? That right? You're definitely mistaken if you do that. Easy is just, you're going to have a pretty easy time to scale up to the mid late game. That's literally all it means. And in some of these matchups, you can kill as well. But more or less, that is the matchup tier list. Now we are going to move on to early game, mid game, and late game, and how you should be playing now early game. This is... I, I can't stress this enough, just focus on farming. Like, you don't need to do much more in the early game, alright? If they're melee, you can start to poke them down. Um, if they're not melee, just farm. You know, if ranged, mage, I wrote it here. If they're mage, focus on making them use their mana on you to a point where they're low on mana. And then, uh, you know... Since you don't use mana, you can stay in lane, and because you have sustain, you can stay in lane, and they are forced to back. Also, keep the wave near you, as you can see by that summoner's rift in the mid lane. You pretty much want your wave in that orange torch pillar, whichever side you're on. If you're on blue side, you want the top one. If you're on red side, you want the bottom one. Draw a line there, and that is where you want the wave to be. So, to reiterate, in the early game just focus on farming there is not much you need to do in the early game just survive and focus on farming uh once you get better you can focus more on poking them down you know these more aggressive playstyle. but if you're starting blood focus on farming try to get almost every single cs and you'll be good to go now real quickly i'm going to be talking about jungle priority in the early game, of course, junglers are going to fight for Scuttle. You know these guys, they're brainless. They're going to fight for Scuttle, even if they see a Vladimir in the mid lane and recognize they have no prior. Now, a couple things I can say about this. First and foremost, you're just going to have to sack sometimes. Uh, it's the harsh reality. Mid lane is jungle's bitch in this season. If you don't play around your jungle and they don't play around you, the game's over. 100%. The game is over. So... Sometimes you are just going to have to sack waves to help your jungler, even if it's not ideal. Now, other times, if you're low, if your wave is really, really fucked up, there's not much you can do. Just ping him. Hopefully, he understands. Pray he doesn't AFK. There's a pretty good chance he will, though. Um, yeah, that's how you want to focus on jungle priority in the early game. So, it's, it's inevitable. They're going to fight for Scuttle. Just assess the situation, and hopefully, you make the right play. Moving on to mid game. So this is where you're slowly becoming a champion. In my opinion, mid game is towards the 10 minute to like 20, 25 ish minutes mark. Uh, you know, your one to two item spike. You're slowly becoming a champion. Obviously, Vlad becomes a champion when he gets Rabadon's Void. So towards the second, third item, 
you're looking to snowball this is where you want to kill if you're in a specific matchup that you can kill this is the time to kill them this is the time to dive them kill them flash them it doesn't matter use whatever to look to create an advantage Participate in all team fights. If there is an objective up and we are team fighting, you should be there 100%. This is because your R can impact the fight significantly and you want to start snowballing. In team fights, especially around objectives, you are going to 5v5, you know, sometimes even 4v4, but you just want to make sure you're there and participate in these fights. Keep in mind, though, you have to assess the situations properly. Once again, if you do not have your flash, your ult, your pool even, uh, starting the fight, you should not enter, all right? If you do not have your flash or your ult, well, flash is a little more situational, mainly your ult. If you're going into a team fight without your R, stop. You know, reset or do something else. Please do not go into team fight without your ult, especially in these objective team fights. Now, if you have no flash, and you're entering these team fights, let's say someone in your team got caught, that's a pretty good sign to just run away. Because if you go in there, you know, with one member down, the best situation you can do is probably kill one, but you're going to die for it because you have no flash. So keep that in mind, assess the situation properly. Now towards the late game, I had to capitalize this, do not infinitely scale as I mentioned earlier. You are not a Kale or a Kassadin. Their late game is significantly better than Vlad's. Um, you have to pick your moments. All right, Vlad's strength comes around three to four items with Flash. Now with Flash, you know, his six item isn't bad either. He can probably nuke a, a team. But keep that in mind. The later you go, the worse it gets. You know, there's so many, uh, so many MR stackers, you know, uh, with... Anathema's chains with other stuff it's going to be very hard to play out if you just keep drawing out the game so ideally you're ending the game before 40 minutes um and even if it goes past that you should realize that you have to play around your key cooldowns so once again assess your role and situation in the late game and this also goes for mid game as well you want to assess what you're trying to achieve in this current state of the game um a lot of times it is probably to just burst down the 80 carry so you should be looking for that you shouldn't waste everything on a tank and then the 80 carry just shreds you right you should be saving everything for the 80 carry and once again <laughs> play around important cooldowns i cannot stress that enough and also save important cooldowns for crucial objectives so towards the late game be very crucial about your flash usage um and your R usage. Now, R usage isn't a whole big deal because it should come back on cooldown, but sometimes it's not. It's mainly your flash. Vlad is not a champion without flash. If you use flash to get like maybe one kill, but an objective is spawning in like two minutes, that's not going to get you anything in the late game. All right, guys, you want to use your uh, important cooldowns for those crucial objectives for Baron, for Elder, because it's completely game changing. Keep that in mind. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the last part of the guide, it is going to be the combo. So I'm going to do this kind of freestyle uh, as opposed to how I used to do my combo guide. Definitely recommend watching that. It'll be much more in-depth. Um, you just search up Chen Chen combo guide and it'll be there. But regardless, just going to be speedrunning it, alright? So the very basic combos, uh, level 1... And towards the early game, you want to definitely master the combo of just auto Q and then back out. Auto Q, what it does is because your auto range is here and your Q range, as you can see, is a lot bigger. Once the auto particle comes out, your Q is guaranteed to hit. Now, moving on to other stuff, and I'm kind of doing it in terms of early game, mid game, then late game combos. That's like your level one to level three pokish combo. Next up, your basic uh, level 3 combo, E auto Q, that's going to proc phase rush. You can also auto Q and then EW, stuff like that, it, it really depends on the situation, but these are your basic early game combos. As you can see, it's not very practical because your W costs health and your E costs health, so a lot of times if you're EWing, 
and it's not to kill them, it is really, really bad. So you just have to assess the situation. Um, majority of the times, you're just going to be queuing them for poke, uh, and nothing more, nothing less. Now, when we implement our uh, flash with our ult, this is, you know, your, your basic late game uh, combo. You want to just kind of do that. So you E. Let me slowly do what I did there. You E, you R, flash, Q. So when you do it fast, it'll look like that. So now real quickly, I do want to talk about the input buffer. Uh, it's a advanced tech that it's pretty hard to explain, honestly. But it's basically where you press Q on them. So I'm pressing Q on them right now. And you see how my body is walking to them. Rather than just waiting for my body to continue, I can just flash and it'll go through. And what's very important about this is that your ult does the same thing. So as you can see, when I let go of my R, my character is walking to it. So I can flash to get it done. So basically what the input buffer combo is, you E, R, flash, and you get it done. And that is your basic fast combo. Now, once you get enough practice, you will get it down to be extremely fast. Uh, if you're starting off and it looks like this, that is totally fine. Don't be alarmed. You will master it eventually. Um, and yeah, that's that's your, pretty much your bread and butter combo. There's not a whole lot of combos within Vlad. It's just kind of how you use it. Now, to implement your pool, there's a couple things you can do. I mean, let's say all of them were hovering here. You can R flash and then E pool. This guarantees, although you're not using pool to dodge something, it guarantees that you're in position to be, you know, directly in the middle of them. And then you can just Q and even Zhonyas. I actually didn't buy Zhonyas, but regardless, that's definitely something. Um, you can E, Q, and then pool to finish someone off. You can E, R, Q, and then pool. Same concept to finish someone off. You can pool and then rocket belt which is pretty neat. I will say, because they changed Rocket Belt to be giving you movement speed when you cast it, it should be some sort of engage, so you should use it and then look to do something like that, where you Rocket Belt R, E, Q, and then pull somewhere in that. You can Rocket Belt R, E, W, something like that, and then do that, if you don't have Flash, of course. So that's kind of how you want to use Rocket Belt. Now, another thing I want to mention is normal cast versus quick cast. I personally use normal cast, but if you unbind this and put it to normal cast, basically, it forces you to hold on to it. Um, and basically, this allows you to do your fast combo a little bit faster. So I'll show you kind of the differences. So this is the combo with uh, quick cast. You know, it's like slightly faster, and then this is with, you know, just the tap one. So right now I'm tapping it, and then I don't have to tap the ability again. It'll just release by itself. So th this, keeping it in normal cast, uh, will actually allow you to free up a finger. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of speed difference. It's still going to catch someone off guard, uh, especially after years of practicing as I have. So keep that in mind. That's pretty much all there is to Vladimir combos. Nothing really unique or interesting there. Like I said, if you want a more in-depth, definitely check out my Vladimir combo guide. It'll talk about that much more. And yeah, that is pretty much it for actually this whole guide, the Season 11 Vladimir guide. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Make sure to check me out on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash chenchen53. I will be streaming a lot and you can check out my gameplays there. Make sure to watch my other videos as I am climbing to Challenger. That is it for me. Season 11, we will probably be back season 12 if there's a lot of changes for another guide. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Chen Chen out.